Now what I like about that technique is that it doesn't do, it doesn't scratch the surface at all actually. Just a bit of sandpaper over that now and then repaint it with linseed oil and you're away. I've looked more closely at this white uh, paint here or this pale coloured paint. It's kind of cream coloured um, and it's also an alkyde oil paint. So it's true to the kind of rule is that you shouldn't paint alkyd oil paint up on top of linseed oil paint. It just uh, doesn't really work. This makes a very, very weak bond. I mean, it might be good for a year or two, but uh, as it gets harder, it just uh, it just falls off. But anyway, blowing is quite a good way of getting it off because it, it, it's quite quick. Um, if it's if the problem is as bad as this particular one, and uh, you don't have to use any heat, and you don't have to use any scrapey scratching. The other one uh, looks like that now. And the colours aren't quite right because of the kind of lights I'm using, but you can see it's actually quite... But it's a lovely colour. I'm still paying customer and they want to have the kind of blue colour they've had here, which I'm going to try and replicate. I won't be able to make it as boring as this colour because uh, I'd have to put lots of chalk in it to do that. And I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to have a more uh, slightly richer colour than that, but the same kind of grey type blue. This is as much as I could get off with the um, the compressed air. Some places where the green would have been a bit damaged by use uh, and so had a, a more rough surface, the alkyd oil is keyed in okay and is still quite it sits quite uh, well. So I mean I haven't taken. There's a bit here as well, where presumably there was a bit of more, there was a bit more wear on the linseed oil paint before the blue went on. Uh, this paint, I would have thought, is from around about 1920, maybe a bit later, and it looks to me like it's uh, very handmade. It's just uh, pigment mixed with oil, which is how I make my paint, uh, without very much grinding. I don't usually grind my paint because the people didn't used to grind their paint in the past. I just stir it together. I might grind it if the, if I see evidence that they have done before, which they do in in uh, you know uh, fine houses with richer customers. Um, what's pertinent? Say, oh yeah, this. Uh, I don't have to get that bit off at all, really. Don't know why that sat so well. Oh, I might be able to get that off as well with the uh, with the compressed air. But anyway, I'm going to go over the surface now with this uh, jitterbug, <coughs> which is important to do because uh, uh, um, obviously even painting with linseed oil paint is still not going to key very well to the old paint. The old paint has a very uh, oil-rich consistency. It's what we call fat, at least in Norwegian it's fat, which is, means fatty uh, which is not good for a, a new coat because you know um, the, or the more oily the undercoat is the more the more difficult it is for the new paint to sit on top really the rule with painting is the same as it is with fine art and that is that you should always have a fatter uh, consistency or more oily uh, medium, you know, the, the, the more layers you have, the more oil you should have. Lean, fat over lean, or thick over thin is another way of doing it as well, where you have progressively thicker coats. Another way of sorting out that problem is to have more glue in the paint, which you use hard picks to do. Um, so I'm going to go over the surface with the jitterbug. I will use another tool to uh, to do these uh, these details along the edges. Um, another kind of you know more pointed sanding machine. Uh, they're not that important because they don't get very much wear because they're actually protected by the corners themselves. So you don't they don't get knocked. In fact, the worst po points are these big surfaces, which where the damage shows up really well, and on of course wherever there's going to be be uh, natural wear from people opening and closing the door. Right, enough talking, let's get on with it. 
I'm, I'm not going to film while I'm doing it. You, you just have to just look at the results. I can't give away all my secrets, can I? Right, bye. Well, I've decided to, uh, perhaps even against my better judgment, to spill the beans on making this paint. I've got a little piece of uh, marble here, which is a nice flat surface to work on. It's good. It's got some good qualities in doing marble. If I was going to make really good quality paint, I could use the marble and use my <coughs> glass muller, as they're called, to uh, grind grind the paint. So I'm going to try and replicate this uh, bundeblå, as it's called in Norwegian, farmer's blue. It's a kind of misnomer. Really, they used some blue pigments in the 1800s that weren't very light, light, um, light fast. So you have to excuse, I'm, I'm uh, <coughs> umming and ahhing a lot, and that's because all of this work I usually do in Norwegian and talk about it in Norwegian and so I'm actually almost having to translate it in my head find the right English words for it that sounds stupid but there you go that's probably going to be too much blue oh maybe not so what I'm after is to make a kind of pot of this to give to the customer. They want to do it themselves, they want to paint it themselves. And I've made this colour several times before and <coughs> I'm using Prussian blue. Oh, I'm filming something completely different. Keep an eye on that screen a little bit. I'm using Prussian blue which is very light fast. So these, this farmer blue as they call it used to be much stronger in colour when it was painted but with time it it um, degraded and it made this kind of grey colour which people in modern Norway really like which they call bundeblå, farmer blue um, so really painting things bundeblå, this colour this modern colour, really, is kind of a bit of fakery. I think I don't know what exactly happened to that kind of blue pigment. All right, it disappeared anyway from the market. <coughs> so here's the, I'm going to use a bit of black. It's Mars black. I think that's called in English. Bone thrut. Bone black. So, although it's becoming more grey-blue at once, it's still a lot more vivid than uh, than the shop product. So let's go for more black and white. The white's already mixed. I did that on another job few weeks ago. It's the same thing though, it's just pigment mixed with oil. So, but because I'm trying to find a colour, I'm just using the palette rather than a recipe. I'd rather just see the colour and work towards it. So I'm not very scientific about this, it's more that I've based on it the experience. I have to be a bit careful not to make too much because really this paint is uh, incredibly dry. What's that in English? Its ability to cover surface area is fantastic. I mean you can get as many as 35 square meters a litre out of it. door is what three three square meters or something these these double doors here maybe three or four square meters no not even that three and a half so I wouldn't need very much would I now that's getting very heavy and thick to work with so I'm gonna put a bit of oil in it 
So I usually use cooked um, cooked linseed oil for this, but I might have run out. Oh no, there it is. There's some more here. Just stop the film a sec. Right, it's on again. Okay, I've just poured a little bit of uh, cooked linseed oil on it. I mean, I ha this is I've got two types. I've got this cold pressed linseed oil here, and I've got cooked linseed oil. And I usually use cooked linseed oil, and that is because that's what they used here. Now I know that the modern restorers in the museums and stuff all want to use the cold pressed linseed oil because it is better but personally I use that for painting paintings I don't use it for painting doors there's no precedent for for using that in the past so did you know, I check the blue <coughs> I mean at least it's relative with the filming so you can see that's still massively more intensely blue than the original even though on the palette it's starting to look a bit grey. This will be a much more lively colour when it's painted on the door as well than these uh, than the industrial colour which has lots of chalk in it. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go for a little bit of uh, burnt umber. Which also actually just works like black. So what was it I was saying a minute ago about uh, the quantities? It's 35 square meters a litre. And this is not more than well, two or three square meters. So it's 3.5 square meters to make it really easy. So I'm going to only need one deciliter of paint. And what I'm making on the palette is much thicker than what I would paint with. It has far, far more pigment in it. And especially since this old paint is so full of uh, oil, the paint that I make also has to be really very oily. I think I need two hands again because I want to put some more oil in. There we go. This is going to be a very shaky camera work, but there you go. I haven't got a tripod. I haven't got an assistant to film me. I probably have to have thousands and thousands of subscribers to achieve such luxuries. So, well, here we go. I'm putting another boring real time. Oh, shouldn't say that really, should I? Okay, it's getting closer now. A bit more white. I think we're almost there. So there we go, the magic ingredient was burnt umber. Now, this paint that I've got here is homemade, but it's. It, in a pot that came from a, a Swedish manufacturer of linseed oil paint. It was very good paint. I liked it. But I ran out from before the job was finished, so I just used the same pot and mixed more. Which was, this is titanium and zinc white. 20-80% split. The zinc is good for exterior paint because it's slightly antiseptic. Helps to stop funguses growing on the outside of houses. There we go, there's a... That's more like it. So if I paint that on there...
Uh, for me, that's close enough. And see, what would happen if you ground the paint is that the black would get stronger. But when you just mix the paint on the palette, see the difference? Oh my god, that's a massive difference. So if you just mix it like that and you just paint it on, the black will slightly float to the surface, but uh, it won't be as dark as it would be as if you if it had been really worked with a with a muller and ground. So the question is, is that enough paint to paint these two doors on the interior? Uh, they might need two coats as well. I might make a little bit more. Can't add more grey. So how long's this film been? Six minutes and twenty six seconds to now, and then uh, I don't know. Is it a couple of minutes before? Anyway, so it's taken about ten minutes to make this paint. I mean, obviously you have to have the pigments in stock. So, you know, you can do it yourself, but why not employ someone to do it as well, if they're really set up to do it. And then, unlike buying things at Ikea, this painted to just be left the same. I mean, there's no reason now to change the colour of this paint, because it will last, really, an incredibly long time. I mean, already this door is 100 years old, and the green paint underneath. Really, I mean, someone has changed the colour just because it, they got bored of the colour, not because the paint, there was anything wrong with it technically at all. It would go for a lot longer. I mean, I've seen houses that are from the 1600s with the same original paint on them. So, I mean, what's that? 400 years, is it? Interior paint. Well, there's no reason for it to deteriorate, really. Obviously, it does get scratched. My interior has been painted for the last 12 or 15 years and I do actually touch it up from time to time. The scratches, not the, all, not the whole thing, just the scratches. There we go, <coughs> I'll put that in a jam jar and then mix in some oil.
one-handed Joe doesn't always do the best work. It's difficult to do work like this and uh, film at the same time. <coughs> anyway, there we go. I haven't taken the blue <coughs> completely down to that red there, which is a, a kind of an alizarin crimson, I think. It's uh, even softer than the green. Really very fatty paint. I wonder whether the painter who did this has used um, some kind of non-drying linseed oil. I don't know which one it is, maybe. Some kind of raw linseed oil in a way, I think. You know, it's not always that these things were done with the best quality products. It, what, what's, what's good about the old paint is more the fact that it works really well rather than that there's necessarily very very good handwork being done. I mean, this is this linseed oil paint has been used by craftsmen for a, a thousand years. This has been used by artists for 600 years. You know it's it, that kind of uh, durability of a, of a technique says a lot for its quality and the fact that also if you can see I mean I'm, the alkyd oil paint the modern paint there has just been blown off literally by by compressed air I mean you don't see the linseed oil paint coming off with compressed air now, it's, it has different qualities it's a softer paint so I mean it perhaps in a way can get damaged quite easily but in my opinion it's better paint and it's easy to make, it's not too expensive. You can do it yourself with a little bit of research. So, I'm sorry that the paint manufacturers, in my opinion, are taking everybody for a bit of a ride. And I know they probably would, it's not very popular for me to say that with them, I'm sure, but there you go. That's why I do this kind of work. Right, there we are then. The door's back in situation. Back in its wall. Um, so I've just put a little bit of the paint on just to kind of check that the colour's alright. So what have I got there in my little jam jar there? <coughs> I think I've probably got about a deciliter of paint. Maybe even a bit less than that, half a deciliter, maybe even. And so, the thing is, it's so dry. Um, it covers so well. You have to really draw the paint out in, across the surface. But you see that little bit, just a tiny little dip into the paint. And uh, especially if the colours conducive like this green is very good already to paint on top of. I don't paint over those gaps because uh, the paint splits if you do that, if you fill the gaps. No, I don't know if I'm actually filming what I'm painting, am I? Am I painting sideways? I can't really see the film and paint at the same time. So a little tiny little dip again. And the thing is, you, you can't really stress how thin this paint needs to be because if it's any thicker than this, it will just drip off as it starts, as it dries. It will run down. So it isn't just to save paint, it's also technically, it really mustn't have a thick coat. Especially when the mix is very oily and it doesn't have any glue in it. Harpix. And that would make it easier if it had Harpix and... Uh, like a Damo varnish, Harpix and, and um, turpentine. Oh, there we go, I'm going <coughs> to carry on painting a bit. I might take a, a little picture. <coughs> it's 
excuse me, a little picture in uh, a little while when I've finished doing it. So we've what we've done. We've skipped ahead a bit. Don't know which way up it's supposed to be that way. Skipped ahead a bit. I've done a bit of painting. Okay, I had. I don't know. I mean, I. It, it's imperceptible the amount that's been used there. I've certainly got a lot left. I wouldn't have thought I'd use more than about a quarter of that paint. Get a bit of light in there. I can't get a light in it. Well, anyway, there's loads left, and I painted a coat on this. So there's certainly enough to do four or five or six coats more if you wanted to. I mean, it doesn't need it. Probably just. Might need one more coat. So there's a thing here, uh, I'm not going to be able to see it on this dark video, but underneath where the lock is, there's obviously some oil contamination because the paint is running down slightly faster there. And then there is a tendency with this kind of paint that has three or four pigments in it, especially with black, which is a very light pigment compared to some of these earthier, earthier ones. compared to the blue and the white that there's otherwise in it and yeah and the earth burnt timber the black is very light so it has a tendency to float to the surface and this is one of the things about when you don't grind the paint it happens more Uh, really the night light in here is poor so I, I can't really see whether it's good enough I think so that's the, the new piece of wood that was in in there with a little bit of ground coat just a bit of white on it just to um, just so that when he paints up on top of it, the customer's going to do the outside. So when the when the paint goes up on top of it, it'll sit better. Now I I like to go back and do this kind of small brushing over it while it's drying. I don't know. I think I'll I might come back in the morning and uh, and come and brush it out a bit because it'll probably still be wet in the morning. And it might even be wet tomorrow evening as well. It takes a long time to dry. I'm not going to do the red now. I might leave that for the customer to do because I'm getting a bit hungry. There we go anyway. I couldn't resist it. I painted it red as well. So the door's finished on the inside, at least with one coat. So that's the, you can see the state of it actually, this whole, whole lot is like this, it's got that heavy green paint underneath it and I'm not going to flake it off because, well you know, it's the customer stuff isn't it? Uh, so really, the same thing needs to be done on all of the doors. So you can see they're slightly different colour. They actually look perhaps a bit more different on the film than they do. Well, they do look quite different. I've put more red in it. I've got another mix which has got a bit more brown, but see what he says. He might like that. So there we go. I'm finished. I'm gonna. Pack up these things a little bit. The white paint on the floor was already there.
Seems to work alright. Quite good. This is a, a nice little cabin. It's, uh, it's It was a summer farm. So... It's... Uh, Probably from about 1900, maybe a little bit later. Certainly, certainly it's had some work done on it in the 30s. Late 20s, early 30s, something like that. The, um, the timber looked like it was much older. All right, that's it for now. You can, uh, I'll let you leave you with an image of Hardland in, Nor in southern Norway.